All right, it's Passion Week, and I'm so excited about Easter Sunday. So let's talk about the three tiers of evidence for the person of Jesus Christ and his resurrection from the dead. The first tier of evidence for the person of Jesus Christ is going to be dealing with a very broad scope of who Jesus is and what history has to say about him. The overwhelming consensus of scholarship is going to agree to this top tier of facts concerning the person of Christ. Number one is that Jesus did, in fact, exist. Number two is that Jesus was a well-known, influential preacher who was thought to work miracles in ancient Judea and Samaria and the surrounding areas. Number three is that Jesus had 12 disciples that later carried his message around the ancient world. Now, tier two of historical evidence for Jesus Christ is going to be centered around his death, burial, and resurrection, and the majority of scholars agree to these six facts. Yes, you may find some scholars who push back on one or two of these, but in general, they're agreed to. Number one is that Jesus did, in fact, die by crucifixion under Pontius Pilate. Number two is that Jesus was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. Number three is that Jesus' disciples shortly thereafter came to believe that he had risen from the dead. Number four is that James and Jude, Jesus' formerly skeptical brothers, also had a radical encounter that changed their position concerning Christ, and they became believers in the resurrection. Number five is that Saul of Tarsus, who was later known as the Apostle Paul, radically came to believe that Jesus had risen from the dead after formally violently persecuting the church of God. And then number six, that these things were taught very early within five years of the event. What I like to call tier three of historical facts concerning the person of Jesus is a group of facts that most scholars do agree to, but there's a little larger group that tries to push back at them. Number one is that there were over 500 witnesses of the resurrection uh, that lived within decades of the event and were available to verify their experiences. Number two is that all of the apostles were violently persecuted for not renouncing their belief in the resurrection, and 11 of the 12 of them were martyred. And then number three is that the tomb was found empty by a group of Jesus' female followers very shortly after Jesus died by crucifixion. Those who have a naturalistic presupposition try to explain the resurrection with things like the hallucination theory, the swoon theory, the conspiracy theory, or some of the other naturalistic explanations, but none of these explain the data as well as the original explanation given by the apostles that Jesus did in fact rise from the dead. God bless and happy Easter.